Hey everyone, Joshua Hinlin here, and today I'm with JL at the Bricks and Minifigs store in Tucson, Arizona. We're going to be giving you a whole tour of this store and checking out some of the really cool stuff that they have on display and have for sale to LEGO fans here in the Tucson area. Before we jump into the store, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how long this store has been going on? Sure. Um, my name is JL. Um, I'm a Tucson native. Um, grew up here. My mom's side of the family is all from Tucson, so Tucson has a a really important place in all of our hearts here. So uh, my wife and I um, uh, decided to kind of go out and, uh, and do kind of our own endeavors as far as like entrepreneurial stuff and things like that and uh, came across Bricks and Minifigs as a franchise and decided to kind of uh, go all in. She thought it was a great idea. I thought it was a great idea. So we kind of just went from there. Um, so we opened our store uh, kind of in a weird time, which was in the middle of uh, COVID, you know, and during that pandemic stuff, when everything was closing down, we mm -hmm. were trying to get our store ready to open. <laughs> so there was a lot of challenges that we had to overcome with that. Uh, so our first uh, grand opening weekend was August 8th, 2020. And we had actually a very successful grand opening, which we were surprised. Um, we didn't know what to expect. So mm -hmm. we thought, you know, either nobody's going to show up or it's just going to be a very little bit of people or it's going to be on the other spectrum of that and just be crazy and we're going to be unprepared for that. So um, we had um, a lot of our sets kind of set up and ready to go, but we don't have the inventory back then like we do now. So we've grown with that. Um, we've grown with our... Um, um, you know, our community and stuff uh, as far as like being known because we have not had anything like this here in Tucson before. So the concept is new to people. Uh, Lego's not new to people. Um, so everybody is kind of learning the brand name, Bricks and Minifigs, and learning what it's associated with and what we actually do here, so. Fantastic, well let's dive on in here sure. with this glass case first <clears throat> and we start with some very old products at the top here. Tell us a little bit about these. Yeah, so these are kind of, um, in a way, original Lego into the US um, that was brought in by Samsonite. I'm sure a lot of your viewers kind of heard a little bit of the history on um, the uh, creator of Samsonite or the owner of Samsonite traveling to Denmark and then bringing back a full Samsonite suitcase full of bricks and just kind of dumping them out and saying, these are great, we have to bring these to the US. And so kind of, you know, history was made with that. So. Uh, the Lego system and Samsonite kind of partnered up to get um, uh, the bricks into the U.S. So um, some of these sets are, you know, uh, pretty old as far as like what they used to do. Um, a lot of the elements they don't make anymore because, of course, they don't match up with their system. They didn't fall into that system, so they right. kind of phased a lot of that stuff out. But most of the bricks that are in these boxes actually will work with all the current stuff. So, and that's really cool, and that's been... Um, kind of a little uh, kind of highlight for the store is to have this, you know, really old stuff next to this really new stuff. It's <laughs> kind of cool. I love seeing the old box art as well. They put the kids on yeah. there, and I think in some cases it was even the the kids of the, the founders, like yep. some of the, the different owners of yeah. LEGO over the years, so there's uh, lots of different cool connections there. Yeah, so a lot of the, the kids featured on these could actually be uh, relatives of, like, um, the original LEGO founders and mm -hmm. stuff like that, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> And then here we get to some more general minifigs as we make our way down. Yeah, so some of these um, are kind of the more um, kind of sought after or just desirable minifigs. And a lot of times we don't have all the parts to these minifigs because they're kind of on the rarer side. Um, but we still wanted to offer them to our customers saying, hey, we have like a piece of uh, this character. If you're interested, you know, you can work on kind of making that character whole again or adding that part to a different one. So we kind of offer them in, in peace that way too. So uh, we're not just hiding it, you know, or having our customers feel like we're hiding it. You know, <laughs> we want everything to be out for people to be available. So this was just another way for us to be able to do that without having it as a full character. That works well. And then below that, it looks like we've got kind of a custom build here. So uh, how, how, much, how do you decide kind of when to feature custom builds in the store and how does that work? So we have a monthly build um, with uh, Julian's case which we'll be showing in a minute but it's uh, on our Facebook page and we do like a monthly theme so like this month or last month's theme was like a spooky town theme so we can have those displayed displayed in October 
And what we do is just ask people on Facebook to work with their family to create um, a scene or in that theme, kind of like a layout of something. And you know, we give them dimensions of the size of the case. If they want to be in this one, it's got to be within a certain range or we can go down to this one. So this is one of the families that built for that and posted on Facebook. And then we kind of pick a winner, you know, just kind of like a, um, uh, kind of like fan favorite type of thing or staff pick, that type of thing to be featured in the main case. And then if they want theirs to be displayed too, we have this case that we can put some of them in as well. So, and then they win a little prize with that and stuff. So it's pretty fun. Right. So we get a lot of participation with it most of the months. Community involvement type of yeah. thing. That's always really cool. Yeah. yeah. So that, you know, that goes back to kind of our, our base is like, we really want to be involved with the community. We want to have this as a good place for people to come, you know, encourage families to work together, things like that. Encourage, you know, people to come in and, you know, just hang out if they wanted to go through the bulk or whatever and just, you know, meet new people and kind of share that. Uh, with everybody. So. Right. It looks like we've yep. got maybe a little more custom stuff down there as well. Yeah, so this is going to be our next theme down here on the bottom there. Um, and then one of our staff members will make like a little kind of example of kind of what we're looking for. And then, you know, people can build on that and go bigger with it or something too. Um, we also have like another one of our vendors that we're going to be um, stocking in the store here. You know, some brand new. Um, little nano figs and chess pieces which are really cool um, they come in all sorts of colors so we'll have those available really soon too and then below that we see the first of many sets that we'll see on yeah, display here yeah. at the store with the millennium falcon down there so you just kind of put stuff wherever you have space yeah exactly and this kind of makes a good kind of display piece down there because it fits well you know and it's one of our staff um, picks and one of their favorites so they like to have that in there then we'll move around the corner here. As we do, I got to point out uh, on your name badge here, you just oh. flex it on us with that goat just hanging out right there. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, he's got his gold chain and everything, <laughs> so he doesn't get away. I like it. Yeah. So then uh, we moved to kind of this whole display wall behind here. Is that all uh, built kits then? Yeah, so these are all our um, pre-owned sets that we have for sale. Um, you know, the bricks and minifig motto is like, um, you know, to reuse, rebuild, recycle type of thing. Um, so we don't take bricks in to go have them recycled as like plastic. We hit bring them in to be recycled into um, use with another person. So um, the use sets that come in, you know, are either from somebody's collection that they've just run out of space for, um, their kids have grown up, they're into a different theme, or they've just outgrown it altogether. And so this way we can provide a space for them to either make some money um, you know, and we can purchase them for cash. Or if they want to move on to another theme, like an older theme, we can do trade too. So uh, we get a lot of our sets in that way. The majority of our inventory comes in on trade. So I noticed the little stickers there that have the staff pick and then yeah. different names written on them. So explain yeah. kind of how that works. So we did a staff pick um, just because we have um, staff that are into different themes or there's a set that they really, really enjoy. So that's kind of their way to put their name on it. And they're like, um, if you want to talk about that set, you know, you can talk to Justin about that set because that's his pick, you know, if, for whatever reason, um, Justin likes that set. And um, so it's kind of a, I don't know, kind of a, a contest in a way too. So if, uh, we have another employee that he will put his staff pick on a set and that set seems to move quicker. Oh. So he's kind of uh, come up and said like, I put my staff pick on that one so we can so we can move it, somebody's going to pick it up. Customers look for the yeah. seal of approval. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a fun way to say, you know, this is kind of what we're into. This is the set in the store. If we, if we were to be able to kind of pick anything, we'd take that one home kind of thing for us. Or it's, you know, something we like to talk about. Um, you know, a theme or a set, or there's something particular about a certain set that we like. Uh, the build, the experience of it, the look of it, the technique that they used in it for something new, you know, or it might feature a new part. So there's some sets that are out now that have brand new parts in them. So that's pretty cool too. Sure. Yeah. It's just a good way to help customers notice kind of what's on the wall there. Yeah. Now, as we move over here, you mentioned Julian's display earlier. So tell us kind of the story behind this area. Yeah. So just before we opened our store, um, a family reached out to us uh, about, it was the grandfather about his grandson that had recently passed from cancer. Um, and he had 
built the Taj Mahal with him, and that's kind of what they were working on. You know, that's kind of was their big project that they had done. But um, his whole time while he was in the hospital, undergoing treatments and things like that, uh, Lego was his kind of go-to comfort. You know, even you know with, with with his last days, they said like he was you know still building with Lego. Mm -hmm. You know, it, so it was a big um, connection with their family. It was a really important part of their family. And when they reach out to us, they asked if there was some way they could donate it to the store, if there was some way we can use it. And we were more than happy to um, say, yeah, you know, if you guys want us to do something with it, let us know. Um, you know, just bring it in and we'll, we'll see what we can do. So <clears throat> what we decided with this one was just to be able to display it. But we obviously, you know, with limited space, we weren't sure like where we could keep it, what we could do with it. And we just happened to come across this really awesome case. Um, it's an old like, uh, display for like jewelry or something like that from the mall across the street oh, okay and so we saw it we're like oh this is gonna work perfectly um, so we had it wrapped with kind of a Lego stud theme and it fits perfectly on top of it and then what we decided to do um, kind of to take it a step further is to make our monthly build based on Julian's case and you know it's that same concept of getting families to kind of do something together interactive with each other so every month we have a, a build theme and encourage families to build with each other and submit the theme. And everybody that's participated with it, they've said, oh, it was so much fun. They like seeing the new builds. The families are really excited to be able to see their, their set displayed in you know, this really cool case. So um, it's a way to honor Julian because he never got to experience our store. And um, you know, this is a way that we can Kind of bring a little bit of comfort to their family they have a place to come in and you know if they want to remember you know they can come in and do that too or you know just kind of spread the word about you know um, what lego means to people it's not always just a toy for kids to play with it's um, a lot more than that mm -hmm. so this is a way that we can show that and um, you know just give that support to their family as well too yeah, I love that. I mean, certainly a big part of what we've done at Beyond the Brick over the years is try to shine a lot a light on the community aspect of Lego and kind of yeah. how it brings people together, whether it's conventions or online or however it might be. For sure. And that's exactly, you know, what really got me back into Lego was, you know, with that program that we were doing the monthly subscription to, um, meeting people that I didn't know um, in the group and them being so encouraging, you know, with the with the build challenges and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's like I built this little cup blindfolded and they're like, oh, that's so good. I'm, it's so cool how you use those pieces. You know, even the color. So I was like, I built this thing blindfolded. <laughs> it looked like nothing. It almost <laughs> didn't even look like a cup, but the encouragement was there and it was always there and it was always really positive. And I just, you know, you just felt that um, even through that. Um, and I was like, this is definitely something I want to be a part of and I want to be like all in with it, so. Right. Yeah. It's now, really important that way. This next display area here, so one thing that's cool about Bricks Minifix stores is you carry more than just the regular sets. You've got different accessories. Uh, sure. You represent kind of other companies. So what, what do we yeah. have on display here? Um, so this is uh, from our vendor that we get. Um, you know, we can get some display stuff. And I've been trying to get these since we opened. So I was really happy when they got them back in stock because they're like a squishy nightlight. Um, I actually don't think are, I've seen those before. Yeah, yeah that's So they're cool. like color changing. And they're like, oh, they're just so cool. I love these things. <laughs> I would take them all home if I could, but uh, no room. <laughs> um, so yeah, we get to carry stuff like this um, from our vendors. Um, of course, Lego does like uh, holiday themes and stuff like that, so we really try to get uh, as much of we, uh, that kind of stuff that we can get in as we can. Some of the other um, kind of third-party vendors that we go through too, um, that we can carry some of their custom items too. So they print their custom stuff on genuine Lego parts and then we can offer those in our store as well too. So just kind of a link into another company that's doing some cool stuff as well. For sure, always great work so, there. Yeah, we look at good quality and like um, craftsmanship and stuff like that and just creativity. So um, these are really fun. And then as we move to the wall again here, we <laughs> see a lot of sealed sets. How do you decide kind of what's on display for sales? Is it just whatever comes in for you to inventory or Pretty do you much. pick yeah. and choose? Pretty much whatever we take in on trade. Um, we get a lot of sealed retired sets in on trade sometimes. So that's kind of the stuff that we like to have out and available because you really can't find the stuff at your regular big box stores because they're, they're not able to sell that stuff. They have to kind of be up and current with what Lego sells. 
um, we also can have our new unbox sets as well too. Um, but it's not really a focal point of our store. It, we like to have it, but it's not really kind of what we're based in. We like the, the older stuff, the retired stuff. Uh, the unique sets and things like that. So we really kind of keep try to keep our focus there with uh, used sets and uh, minifigs and just other creative avenues that Lego has, mm -hmm. not just their brand new in box and available stuff. Right. So. Speaking of which, as we move down to the <coughs> end here, I think you see more of these used, kind of older, retired sets. So what yeah. are what are your some of your favorites that are on the wall right now? The X of Force. Um. Stands out to me, always such a cool, I've always yeah. said that's an underrated theme, those sets. For sure, definitely. <laughs> um, they had some really cool elements in those sets and just stuff you don't really see anymore. And it was like, um, uh, in a way, they were like, okay, how can we use this part and how many different ways can we use mm -hmm. this part in those sets? And so a lot of times when you open an Exo Force set, you're like, this looks like a bunch of just hodgepodge stuff. But then you build these really cool, um, uh, play sets with it and you know along with that too they had some really unique minifigs as well that kind of I think really get overlooked with these with these themes um, so our certified sets you know sometimes we'll get a set in that's totally complete um, and in good condition and then we can repackage it um, instead of selling it pre-built we sell it unbuilt um, and then we certify it and um, make sure that all the parts are there so when you open it up you can build it yourself and a lot of people that's what Lego is for them is that building experience. Mm -hmm. So we get to offer it that way as well too, which is really cool because uh, how many people get to really enjoy a, building a, a original Slave One or something <laughs> like that? You know, they want to go back to their childhood and you know be able to do that. And you know, since the box is already open, they can kind of get a little bit of that experience too as well. Instead of like if they did buy that brand new in box, it has a different value. So you're not really wanting to open it. Mm -hmm. you know, or, or you have that internal struggle, like, should I open this, <laughs> should I build it, or should I just leave it? But, you know, you have that urge, you know, I want to build it. Uh, so this is a way for people to get that set and be able to experience it that way, too. Exactly, so. yeah. Let people come and maybe pick up the set they could never afford or couldn't pick up in their childhood, and they can finally complete yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We've had a lot of people come in and say, oh, I had that set when I was a kid, and it's just exciting for them to see it again. Um, or they wanted that set as a kid and now as an adult they're like oh now I can get that set for me I can take that one home um, so it's really fun you know it, um, you see people walk in and if it's their first time in here they're just like wide-eyed they don't even know where to start they're like I didn't think it would be like this when I came in here mm -hmm. so it's really fun it's really cool to see um, a grown adult kind of turn into a kid again um, looking at the minifigures or just running your hands through the bulk and like um, Almost everybody has mentioned that it's like getting your hands through the bulk, and, the, and and that kind of brings you right back to your childhood. If you had Legos as a kid, that's the sound of your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was really kind of ingrained with me too, is like getting my box of Lego and dumping it out, and just that sound um, kind of brings you right back to it. So it's really fun. I also want to mention, since we're standing underneath it right now, yeah. one of the really cool elements, unique elements of this store is this train track that runs yeah. all around the top of the store. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this was one of our original concepts that we wanted to have in the store. Um, and Tucson had a couple of restaurants um, that had a train, like a mini train going around. And it was just such a cool feature. And some of the um, hardware stores here in town um, that's one of their focal points too, is they have these model trains that run around the ceiling and it's just like, it grabs your attention, you know, you like just imagine yourself on that train, <laughs> like this is so cool. And so, um, like our original concept for the store, this was kind of one of the thoughts I had. And so it was, this has been quite a feat to get it to actually go around and stay going around because um, Lego track is not all that forgiving. Mm -hmm. so, um, it's definitely gone through a couple of phases of what works and what doesn't work. And so I think we finally got it to where it's running pretty smoothly now. But it's a fun feature. You know, we get a lot of requests to get the train going and stuff like that. Um, so one of the big things we did for our birthday party room is we wanted it to cut through the wall. We wanted it to have a kind of a tunnel effect. Um, so the people that are on the other side of the wall having their birthday party, you know, as the train's going through, you know, we could put like a little sign on it that says happy birthday or something like that. So all these different ideas that we could do with the train. And, you know, we got a, another um, a car that I could put a GoPro on and we could do like a kind of first person view of the train track going around. So 
we're still a work in progress on that, but it's right around the corner though. That's super cool though. Yeah. It becomes almost an inter interactive part of the shop then. <clears throat> yeah, so the original idea was to have like a button that a, um, like a, anybody could come up and push to get the train going. But I quickly found out that to do that, you need the nine volt track. And that's kind of hard to come by. And the amount of track we need for this would probably put us out of business. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we had to go with a little bit less expensive route and um, use the battery operated chains for now until we come up with a, a concept or something that we can get it powered up by, you know, by plugging it in. So that's future goals. <laughs> sure, there you go. Another unique part of this shop and something you don't <coughs> see very often is the puzzles that you have stocked here. Yeah. So where do you get those from? Um, we purchased those from, uh, honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember where I got those. Okay. Um, I think we do have, with the franchise, I think we do have a vendor that offers them, but I don't know if we got them from them or not. But, um, yeah, we came across some of the puzzles and they're just really, really eye-catching. And I think that's one of the, one of LEGO's new things that they're doing now is they just did that, um, LEGO Ideas submission for their puzzle mm -hmm. and so they finally picked the finalist for that one and it's really cool so lego's actually going to be producing their, their an actual puzzle with the lego theme so um, that's really cool so hopefully we can get something like that in as well too but yeah the puzzles are really cool um, people come in and you know uh, like my mother-in-law for example um, she's big into puzzles so that was her kind of hobby is so you know go in, uh, have a puzzle on the table type of thing. Um, and then when we we're opening our store, uh, she was wanting to know how we how she could help. So we had her kind of certify a set or put a set together and she was hooked from there. So she's like um, uh, kind of uh, our certifier for some of our sets, <laughs> you know? And so it's like doing a puzzle for her. But she's like, but it's in 3D. So it kind of really, um, uh, connects again with uh, Lego in puzzle for, uh, puzzle form, but in Lego. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, <laughs> but it, it kind of makes that kind of crossover for some people that like puzzles. Some people like um, Lego because they like puzzles and have gotten into it that way. So this is kind of brings both of them together for us. So. Something for everybody. That's yeah, great. Exactly. Yeah. And before we continue on with more of the store, I wanted to show kind of a little behind the scenes, kind of the, the uh, working area of the store a little yeah. bit here. So, so what happens back in this area? So quite a bit happens back in this area, as you can tell. Um, this is kind of our storage slash workshop area. Um, this is uh, kind of where we do a lot of our sorting. We get minifigs um, prepared to go out. Uh, we have spare parts for stuff that people might be looking for something specific. Um, that we're kind of putting stuff together. Uh, so it's just kind of a hodgepodge of a, a workstation slash storage slash prep area. Um, all of that kind of <laughs> rolled into one. Uh, so uh, we have one of our employees that's um, very good about getting in and organizing a lot of the stuff. So uh, when he's here, it's like, okay, this is your spot. Uh, what kind of magic can we work back here to get things going? So uh, he does really good back here. What I love whenever I go into a, a Lego related store like this is just the, the parts in massive quantities that you see behind the scenes. So just like down here, the, the yeah. minifig heads. Yeah. And I'm sure there are other examples through here as well, but it's just that you seeing that one number of a part like that in such a huge quantity is always yeah. cool. Um, yeah, so I did uh, have the opportunity to um, purchase a retired Bricklink store. Um, and so that really helped us get a lot of some of the inventory that we have. Um, and so that really helped us, you know, kind of figure out like with some of this stuff and like how do we organize this, um, uh, how, where can we use these parts, you know, that type of thing. So uh, we were really fortunate to have that opportunity. So that really kind of built up a lot, a lot of our backstock for some of this stuff too. So, but it's like a time capsule because you know you had the Bricklink store through a certain era, and that's what he was collecting and, bar and purchasing. Mm -hmm. So that's what his Bricklink store had was <laughs> all of this stuff from a certain era. So it was really interesting to see that too, uh, and going through all of it. Now, do you yeah. guys sell online as well? If they, if there's something available <laughs> in the store, can people find that online? We did not have an online store, and um, one of the reasons for that is I'm not really computer savvy enough to kind of get that going. Um, but also, we really like focusing on the in-person experience with our store, and that's really wanted, where we wanted to maintain our focus. Um, and we didn't want the online store to be a distraction from that. 
um, or pull our time away from being in the store here. So if I had an employee running an online store and stocking and stuff, there's a lot of um, kind of time investment that that takes too, and updating and keeping it up and stuff like that. So um, we just like the small kind of local store feel to us, and it, um, I think for some people in the community, it's like a kind of an exclusivity type thing. Instead of being online, we're in person, and mm -hmm. we're um, more personable in that kind of way, or more, there's a word for it, more um, like this, that in-person experience. Yeah, like accessible person -person. kind of yeah, as well, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I feel personally that an online store kind of would distract from our store in that way. So um, we like to keep it uh, yeah, just in person. Yeah. You know, a lot of people that are coming in here, they come in here because they don't want to shop online. Um, they want to find the part themselves from the book. Um, they don't want to just go online and purchase it from a stranger. You know, our community is pretty strong about supporting local um, businesses and stuff. So that's important to a lot of people that come in here. Is they're supporting a local family. We're from here. <laughs> you know, we live here. Um, our employees work here, and they live here too. So um, it's kind of helping everybody that way. Um, so if we have um, uh, the opportunity to kind of continue with that without an online store, then um, we'll do that. So, you know, providing that in-person experience. Sure, yeah. I think that works well. Now, is there more behind the scenes we can <coughs> see down here? Yeah, there is a little bit. We can go into our party room, um, kind of give a quick tour of that. We have um, the space here, so this space kind of doubles as our party room. Um, you know, if we have classes, we just finished up uh, doing our very first class, which was a stop motion class. And it was a big hit. Uh, we did a four week program. So we did like one day a week um, with one of our staff members that kind of headed that up and the kids had a blast. They made some really cool stuff. And so hopefully they'll submit that stuff back to us and we'll put it on our <laughs> YouTube channel for them. Um, but yeah, they had, a, they had a great time. Our birthday party, like um, most of the other bricks and minifigs, if they do have a party room, they will typically have a derby track. So the main event basically is building a derby car and racing it down the track. And ours is a short track, so if it crashes at the end, it's just all that more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the derby track is something that I think kids love no matter what. I mean, yeah. e even in Lego House in Denmark, they mm -hmm. have uh, something similar to this. Yeah. So basically anywhere uh, Lego conventions will have them, anywhere that, yeah. that there's a Lego space, uh, derby track is always a good idea. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It really is, you know. Um, my son's found a way to make um, a really blocky car and he wins with it. So that's his go-to thing is just build up the biggest block <laughs> you can and race that. <laughs> he gets to come in and practice a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So this, this is a lot of fun. Um, you know, we, we get a lot of positive feedback for the birthday parties, um, you know, and it's good for all ages. It's good for you know, boys and girls alike to, you know, come in and, and play with the Lego. We have some other options if they don't want to do the racing. Um, we do, um, they could do a bridge building, you know, spanning across the tables. They could do a tower build, you know, or they could just do a free build, you know, like on a base plate, they could build whatever they want on it. So it's kind of fun. Almost so like the Lego right Masters right. type challenges yeah, that they can yeah, choose from. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's really cool. It's really fun. Um, and the space also doubles as our, our work area too. So, you know, because we are a smaller store, we have limited space. So we utilize this uh, area a lot for um, different trades or things like that that come in that are kind of too big to keep out there. Um, we bring them in here and process that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. How, how does this space work in terms of, do you book this out online? Are people interested in using <coughs> it? Um, we have, we don't have an online booking for it yet. We're still working on that. So. Um, Right now, it's just a call in or uh, come in in person and uh, do a, a deposit and to save your date, and then uh, we kind of take care of the rest from there. Um, as far as um, booking, you know, fifty dollar deposit, you know, to save the date and then mm -hmm. take care of the rest on the birthday party day. And we have different packages available depending on a large or small party, and then um, if it's a weekday or weekend. So we have some some options for everybody. Great. So.
Very cool. Yeah, well, you can come in and have your have your Lego birthday party or really any event. I'm sure you'd even do like yeah. corporate events or anything here if people were interested. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's something we really wanted to do too is like work with, you know, local companies in Tucson and be able to have a space for their company to like uh, get their employees to come in and um, do like a kind of a team building event or something like that. So that's something else that's in the works um, that we're hoping to get, you know, before, you know, beginning of the year. Hopefully we can do that. But um, yeah, if we had a gentleman book a party just because it was his birthday, you know, <laughs> he's 60 plus years old and he wanted to have a place that he can hang out with his grandkids and oh, yeah. that they could have a good time. So he booked his birthday party here so his kids could, his grandkids and his kids could play. So that was really a lot of fun. So they had a good time. So any age really, you know, of course, you know, you gotta be a little, a little older than three years old to enjoy it. But um, other than that, yeah, we're, we're any age is welcome. Sounds good. Yeah. What else do we have back here down the hall? So we've got um, a small hallway, a little bit of storage for back hall. And then we've got our uh, secret storage room here that has our Ooh, high tech very security secure. door. <laughs> so this used to be um, a cell phone store. And so the space, we kind of kept the same as like um, the, the shape of the store, but we took out all of their cabinets and then had some walls in place back here. But we kept this because it's just kind of fun and unique and we don't use it for anything, but um, it kind of gives us a, a, a secure place back here. Hello. That, Hi. Hello. <laughs> My wife, Becky. Good timing. <laughs> this is the gate you put down for the Black Friday rush yeah, and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so That's our, our, our safe room for, for, the, for the chaos. <laughs> yeah, so this we is We can our, glance in here then. Yeah, so this is our, um, our back office, which um, is basically exclusive to our employees. So we have... Um, you know, just a back stock of stuff, um, personal items that we keep, uh, personal projects that we're working on and stuff like that. So it's usually in disarray and chaotic back here. Space so, is limited, as you said, yeah, you know, you gotta use every every it, section. It, this used to be a <laughs> tiny little uh, secure room for all of their back stock for phones. Uh, we were able to extend it back and kind of close off this wall so we can have an actual office space back here. Um, so we get our little collections. Here's the... Uh, the train I was telling you about, or GoPro sits on there. Okay. And so that can go around. So one of the old IR train remotes goes with that one. So, yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks yeah. for thanks for giving us an even deeper behind the scenes yeah, look. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is deep in the bowels of the walls and. <laughs> and <laughs> now we can keep going down the hall and kind of back out to the main store then. So. You'll see some of the, the base plates are kind of the first thing here. And these are, a lot of these are custom ones, right? Kind of third party? Yeah, so um, <coughs> most all of the bricks and minifig stores will carry this brand. And it's a very sturdy base plate. Um, everybody loves them. They're really, really popular. Um, for one of the reasons, as you can tell, they come in a ton of colors. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that people really like about them is that they're stackable uh, for the most part. And so you can stack them. Um, you can build underneath them. They can attach um, uh, to all of the regular Lego base plates and stuff like that too. So um, we've got different uh, road base plates as well too. Um, stuff that we don't have in stock right now is from a, another company that build, uh, makes custom printed base plates. And so I, I think a lot of the stores carry those as well too. They have like space themes, uh, Minecraft themes, those type of things, and they're really cool. So we can't wait to get those. In yeah, the kind of the pre-printed so, ones. I've seen yeah, those. Those are yeah, really neat. Yeah. yeah. And they build giant mural type ones too. So <laughs> we just haven't made that step yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. And then what? we have kind of a variety of different accessories on this display. Yeah, so this is kind of what we have left over from our school supplies that we did. Um, so there's different books, um, pencil boxes, lunch boxes, and things like that, notebooks backpacks on um, and stuff like that so um, you could get all your back to school supplies and stuff like that in Lego theme so it's more fun that way and then <laughs> make school more tolerable <laughs> that's right no that's perfect one one other part I got to make sure we mention certainly from an AFAL perspective uh, the bricks and minifig stores are very much known for their bulk brick and yeah. I know a lot of Lego builders come in here and find the parts they need for their yeah. build, so you've got quite a few just uh, areas here that people can pick from. Yeah, and we're actually going to be adding in um, a sixth, a sixth table probably in the next few days here, 
Um, we do get a lot of bulk in. Um, it does, it's kind of a process um, to get it out. Um, but, you know, we're, we're adding to it all the time. So the parts in here are changing week by week. Um, we have a lot of regulars that come in and are trying to put an old set together. They're looking for parts and pieces for that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people come in and it's a little overwhelming if they're in here the first time. They're looking for a specific piece. They're like, I have to look through all of this. Like, I, you might find it in the first bin. You might just do one swipe of it and there it is. <laughs> you never know. So um, part of the fun of, I think, coming from a kid's perspective when I was younger was the search for that part that you're looking for. You know kind of mm -hmm. in your mind what you need um, to finish that car or whatever it is you're building and you know it's that search and for me that was part of uh, you know the fun of it when I was a kid is like just searching and searching and you know that would take up most of my time is searching and, and uh, like 75% of the time searching it's like 25% of the time building it. <laughs> so. Um, for me, it's fun. It's relaxing. It's, you know, kind of got a meditative kind of aspect to it in some ways, you know, where you can kind of focus in on what you're looking for and kind of forget everything else. And so you kind of get that time to yourself in some ways, too. And so this table, um, you know, there, there could be somebody here for an hour, two hours, you know, searching through their parts list to get every part that they need out of it you know, and then coming back the next week and doing it again. So it's really kind of fun. You have a lot of regulars that come through our bulk here, so. You just got to keep an eye out for the non-Legos, the bin, yeah, of, bin yeah. of shame there in the middle. Yeah, That's so, where you deposit those. Yep, so, you know, <laughs> even us with our trained eyes, you know, looking through all this Lego, sometimes something gets past us um, and it does end up out here. So, you know, um, instead of, you know, throwing it on the floor or throwing it somewhere else, we got the bin of shame there to deposit it in so it's kind of you know just a a fun search thing too you know find something that doesn't belong there it goes <laughs> right and i think this is such a cool service that the, the bricks and minifig stores <laughs> offer for builders to be able to come in either like you said complete those sets or find the parts they're looking for for their yeah. own mocks yeah. yeah and you know we have uh, different containers at different price points for whatever your need is um, we do it a la carte too if we need to um, you know if somebody's coming in just for three pieces you know we can price it out or work out a deal with them that way too. Mm -hmm. So it's not, not strictly to the to the um, the size of the container, you know, if we need just need a part or two. Right. So yeah. So let's move over to this wall now then and you see kind of a lot more of the products you have on display as well yeah. as a lot of the, the minifigs and kind of smaller things you keep in the the glass cases. Yeah, so this is um, kind of something we've had our mind on for a while to start uh, um, kind of a tiered case for different product prices uh, for kind of a quick grab um, for, you know, kids that want to come in. They've got five, ten, or fifteen dollars to spend and they've something in here catches their eye, you know. Um, so we're, we've got this as kind of a work in progress today uh, that we've got going. So uh, it just kind of provides an opportunity for them to pick something up within their budget. Mm -hmm. So and it's, you know, so we label it clearly and they can kind of get a good visual. So you know, spending that allowance, you know, a lot of kids come, are coming in for it. They only have a certain amount of money and, you know, this kind of helps them uh, kind of get that experience of that um, kind of transactional type thing. So they come in and they know how much they have to spend. It's a really good visual for them to see that too. I love the, the old tower bridge set up there yeah. looking fantastic on display. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a pretty awesome set and um, it's definitely, um, one of the ones that you don't see very often, uh, so it's kind of cool to have it. We're, when we have stuff like that and you know, when it sells, it's like, it feels so empty. <laughs> like, uh, what else, how can we replace it, you know? Uh, I think so. I saw a couple things in the back room you could put, yeah, <laughs> you probably. Could put up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we, ha we would have a problem kind of filling the space right now, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, it, if it's here for a couple months or something like that, you get used to seeing it and then <laughs> it's like, oh, we kind of miss it. Like. <laughs> but it's good to see it go to a new home. You know, that's kind of the purpose there. Down here we see some, some more minifigures, even some older ones. So you've got like the, the German soccer team minifigures. I think that's what those are. Yeah, so that's kind of what we have left. That was the winning team of <coughs> like the 2014 FIFA championship or something like that. And they were like tied with like Venezuela or something like that. And they um, went into overtime and they kicked the final goal and, and won the game. So that's kind of an iconic set there. We did have the whole thing out, um, you know, so that's kind of what we have left of those guys. Uh, mm -hmm. so. These older Knights minifigures here, 
Yeah, those guys are really cool. Um, they're in perfect condition. They're really cool. The colors that they used with those series with the um, uh, Kingdom Knights Kingdom yeah. Kingdom Knights. Yeah, I think that's oh. right. Something like that. It gets confusing with all yeah. the different re series yeah. they've released. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but those those are um, some of my favorite knights. I really like them. Uh, they <clears throat> the colors are just really cool and and the way they did. Now, next to that, you've got some uh, video stuff minifigs there mm -hmm. on the right, uh, I think. So I know that's a, that's a theme, certainly from an AFOL perspective, that a lot of people have kind of made fun of a little bit. They're yeah. like, what is this? What is yeah. LEGO trying to do? What has right. the reaction been like from customers to those? It's been slow. I think, um, uh, I think <clears throat> when you integrate um, the, um, the phone or the electronic version of it with the, um, the AI type stuff, I think it kind of um, excludes kind of some of the generations from Lego mm -hmm. in, in a way that uh, it's, it's a new concept. Um, they've used it in other stuff too, but um, I think that is part of the reason why it didn't take off as well. Uh, it doesn't really have much connection for people, I don't think. Um, the characters are really unique and the, uh, the parts that they have in them are really interesting. But I don't think as a theme and whole, it really kind of grabbed a lot of people's attention. Um, I think also too, a lot of people didn't understand what it was. So um, like, where did it come from? Why did, why is it here? Um, <laughs> a lot of questions <laughs> like that. <laughs> and so, but if you get into the app and you start using it, you kind of see that it is a really interactive thing. Um, and, it, but you have to kind of be invested into it. It's kind of one of those things where um, you kind of have to continue with it and kind of use it all the time to really get, get a good grasp on what it is. So it's not a like, buy your minifig and use it one time, it kind of, it, it will fizzle out fast. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's kind of been one of those things where it's like, huh, you feel like they kind of missed the mark on something. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. But what, these glass cases here are a great example of kind of how bricks and minifig stores give you such a massive variety, whether it's in the kits mm -hmm. themselves or just all of these minifigures. So as we move on down, you've got some Minecraft I see there. Looks like maybe some Harry Potter stuff as mm -hmm. well. Uh, the collectible minifigures, obviously, I'm sure you can see different series marked off there. Yeah, so these are a way for customers to come in and, um, you know, it, so we don't have everything all the time. And, you know, this is a small, very small percentage of what LEGO actually has, you know, and what they've actually produced. Um, but, you know, with the trades that we get in, we kind of don't know what's going to come through the door sometimes. and. Uh, sometimes we get surprised with some of the things we get in and you know we get like a whole series of an old set uh, which we've got a couple down here um, or we can add to what we have here you know we might get somebody's collection that had a couple of rare minifigs in it and you know we get to offer those you know maybe back in 2016 you missed out on collecting that one mm -hmm. minifig from that series and you know it's a good possibility that um, if you come and look through that we may have it here and you can complete that series so the minifigs are a really big focal point for a lot of the bricks and minifig stores just because there is such a huge variety in them, but they're also very iconic and um, there's a little bit of something for everybody. You know, whether you're like into like Jurassic Park themes, you're into Harry Potter themes, Star Wars um, is a huge one, um, or you're just looking to uh, finish some of the collections of the, um, the CMF series. Uh, another thing I noticed here in the background, so we talked about the Tower <coughs> Bridge set earlier, you've got the Coliseum and a yeah. number of other kind of bigger sets there. Obviously, some of these have some <coughs> pretty big kind of high dollar marks on yeah. them. Do you ever get anyone coming through the door that maybe isn't real familiar with Lego and they look at that and they're like, wow, I didn't realize sets cost that much money. Yeah, yeah that does happen from time to time. Um, but, you know, we try to keep our prices um, where that set is still accessible. Mm -hmm. If it's available brand new, still we're going to be at a lower price than at brand new because obviously it's already built but um, we also have that um, kind of as something if they didn't buy the set new because it seems a little bit intimidating to actually build it up you know but they like the way the set looks mm -hmm. or it appeals to them or maybe they visited the coliseum but you know they they don't want to build the coliseum right but they would want to have it on display so this is a way for them to to get that as well so. Yeah, so and also on some of our stickers uh, for our price tags, you'll notice like we have the yellow circle on there and uh, with some of the older sets, we like to mark the year on it. Um, just give people an idea of like uh, what 
decade <laughs> some of the sets <laughs> came from. And sometimes that can help reflect on what, why the price is what it is, because some of the sets can be um, pretty rare, um, and you don't see them uh, very often. Um, and sometimes you might see pieces and parts from them, but you don't see the set complete. Um, so These classic space sets right here are a good example of that really for sure. Example. Obviously, yeah. If, yeah, you look at some of those prices there, and the casual fan might walk in and be like, wow, that seems like a lot of money. But obviously, yeah. these are decades old now and very sought after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the space theme is um, close to my heart because that was my favorite as a kid was um, this is would have been like my collection <laughs> had I kept it together um, as a kid. So I always got the small boxes with the with the space minifig and the build and I would use those parts to add in to build a bigger spaceship or a bigger vehicle or something. And then I also had another character to go with it too. So that was mm -hmm. always exciting for me as a kid. Um, but my dream was always wanting the bigger spaceships and stuff like that. But, you know, times being what they were when I was a kid, I just didn't get that kind of stuff. So um, it was kind of always that, that kind of unicorn type thing of those space right. sets that I wanted. <laughs> so so uh, percentage wise, wh how much would you say is kind of more recent on th sets that are maybe even available stale or just a few years out of production versus those older, you know, 70s, 80s type of stuff? Um, it's a pretty eclectic mix okay. because um, when you look at some of the of the decades of Lego and some of their themes, some of their themes were really short-lived. So they might have had like six, seven themes during that decade and um, so it's really kind of hard to pinpoint like where everything was at that time. Um, but right now we try, we have a pretty good mix of like some of the newer stuff, like some of the newer Harry Potter, like the Diagon Alley, um, you know, and then we contrast that with the space set right above it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and then al almost everything in between. There's some, some sets when we, when we started doing the store that uh, the themes like I didn't even know existed. There was some stuff that like I had no idea about until we got the store. Um, and it's a theme that I really like and it's the uh, Nexo Knight series. And I had no now idea. Now that's a little controversial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you look at kind of the, um, the parts that they used with the translucent pieces mm -hmm. that um, kind of is a close thing to me for as a kid like the translucent pieces were like gold it's like mm -hmm. those were the pieces and parts that you always wanted and um, with that theme they had such a unique use of them in some of their stuff with the color you know that orange and blue contrasting with each other and i don't know for me that was like something i didn't know about and just found out about recently and i was like just really impressed with that kind of stuff so one set that stands out to me here that you don't see very often <coughs> from this theme is this uh kind of like snowboarding set here. And it even has kind of the, the ramp that goes down yeah. and then you can ride down the, the slope there. Yeah, so um, this kind of ties into where they did, were kind of going into the sports. They were tying into some of the Olympic stuff uh, as well. Um, so this is kind of some of their branding they did with, um, um, with the gravity games and stuff like that. So you've got your little weighted um, uh, snowboard here. And he's got a really cool theme on there with the black mini figures and the red eyes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and then he just starts at the top there. See if he'll work. He comes in and he either wipes out or he makes it to the bottom. <laughs> and he can position it. Yep, he's a wipeout. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta keep working on those tricks there. Yep. <laughs> Now, I think that was what kind of early 2000s for a lot of that stuff they started doing more with the yeah, sports and yeah and so this is kind of um, something where you can kind of take control of him I forgot about that then, thing yeah you can kind of perform so the can, tricks like, go in and kind of come up and like spin and do his tricks there so you got a little bit more control with that guy so yeah, super neat that you were able to have all so many so much variety kind of on display yeah, here. That's one of the really fun <coughs> things about this store too. Is like I said, you know, with the with the buy and trade, you know, that we do here, um, at any moment somebody could come in with these really cool sets that you know they're either um, tired of lugging around, they've moved half a dozen times or something, or they're like this just we're not using it anymore, or they've outgrown it. They've out or their collections outgrown their space. <laughs> um, so you never know really what's gonna come in. Um, and that's kind of the fun part about it. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, you cut, get things like this, like, wow, I've never seen that before. <laughs> and now we have it in the store and we can, you know, bring that kind of thing to somebody else who's interested. Um, so there's, uh, you know, a lot of 
really interesting and unique items out there that almost on a monthly basis we're seeing something new that we've not seen before so it's really cool yeah i'm sure that keeps the job fun and interesting yeah. as well you never you never know what's going to come through the door yeah definitely definitely one cool thing you guys sell here as well is kind of the jewelry accessories. I love how you even have the mirror here like a jewelry <laughs> yeah. store. <laughs> yeah, so you can hold it up and kind of get your, pick your color, pick your shape. Um, I mean, who doesn't want the uh, scorpion shields here? Yeah. <laughs> I always tell yeah. people you can snap them together so you don't lose them, and you can decorate them with little studs yep. or whatever. Yep. There you go. Yeah. yeah, so these are made from genuine Lego parts. Uh, this is kind of a little hobby of mine that I did. So, you know, putting the um, putting the earrings together or, you know, just kind of making other stuff. I did a little bit of like chain mail stuff. So I've got my necklace there. Kind of got into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, it's just some little side hobby that, you know, is kind of fun. Another expression of, you know, another way you can use Lego elements in a way to be creative. So it's, it's not just about connecting them together. It's about, you know, all the different uses I can use them for. Um, so I'm I, a walking advertisement because even <laughs> teenage boys will be like, I yeah. love your earrings. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You really reach a new audience. <laughs> I do. <there. laughs> I'm like, come get some for your mom. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. So we they're pretty popular. We go through quite a bit. Um, so it's it, it. I don't know. It's just kind of fun to be able to to have that as an option for people. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. But you also sell these uh, Build Better Bricks kits back here. They do absolutely yes. fantastic work there, so that's cool. Yeah, People can come in and check those out. Really, really amazing things here. Uh, let's see. One of my favorites here that they do, um, one of my favorite candies, uh, turds. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> they just switch it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they've got the red plumber, the green plumber. Um, yeah, so these are, these are really um, quality builds that they've got here, you know. Um, you know, with their kind of um, smaller builds that they do mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the parts. So these ones come with instructions. They come with all the genuine Lego parts and pieces. And these are really, really cool things. I was, when I heard about these, I was like, we have to have these because these are just really, really awesome things. They're a lot of fun. Um, uh, going back to my childhood, you know, one of the funnest things I got to do was go to the arcade, you know, <laughs> with my dad, we'd go to the, like the dime arcade and stuff like that. And, you know, a dollar would get you 10 games, you know, it doesn't get you quite the same thing anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. So these are kind of a, a, a fun throwback for me with the Lego. So that's definitely something we wanted to, wanted to offer and carry to, for our customers. That's right. And that kind of brings us full circle in the store now to the, yeah. the checkout counter. So I yeah. think the experience is about to come to an end. Yeah, <laughs> so we have our checkout counter here. Um, when we get busy over the weekend, we have the other side. That's usually our trade-in center. But we have another register that we open up over there. Um, so we can kind of have both of them going when we get busy. Um, yeah, just other fun things that we mm -hmm. offer like um, that are really popular here are infinity cubes. So we've got kind of our little branded ones there with our tiles. Um, and they're just kind of a fun little fidget toy. I don't know if you've seen these at the other stores. But no, that, yeah, that is cool. They're, they're a lot of fun and they're really popular. Um, we had a Boy Scout troop uh, come in and they wanted to know if we had a, a, a project or something they could work on that they could learn, you know, and it had a step-by-step -step thing. I was like, well, we'll teach them all how to make an infinity cube and mm -hmm. kind of let them go home with that. And it was a big hit. They had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and all that kind of thing is teaching, you know, parts techniques and the way that you can use parts to, to achieve different shapes and that sort of thing as well. Yeah, um, and you know, there's people out there that are working with, with, with Lego and finding new ways to do things all the time. So it seems like every day somebody's found a new way to use something old. And that's just, I don't know, it always amazes me is like how long Lego's really been around and all the new things people keep creating with the bricks and the pieces mm -hmm. and parts. Um, you know, like our bulk table here, like there could be anything in there, you know, you just a little <laughs> bit of imagination or creativity and, you know, you can have anything you want. So that's kind of what makes like a, a lot of fun and, you know, uh, it stands the test of time that way too, because there's no limit to an imagination. So, you know, this is a good uh, avenue for that and a good tool. Mm -hmm. so. No, that's fantastic. Now, for people maybe in the, the Tucson area or someone even who's just passing through and wants to find more info about the store, where's the best places to kind of follow you guys online and find out that yeah, information? So we have our Facebook page, um, 
and that's linked with our Instagram account currently. Um, we're working on developing our YouTube channel, and so some of the class stuff that we did with our stop motion stuff, we're gonna um, post those to there. Uh, so, of course, we have our web page that's in development. Uh, it's accessible, uh, and our email and stuff is out, out there too with that. So, um, a lot of people when they got questions, they can just call us directly too. Um, you know, we're on Google, so you search um, Bricks and Minifigs Tucson, and you know we usually pop up right away if you're local here. And um, all our information, store hours, all that stuff. We're open seven days a week, so we're here 10 to 7 every day, uh, with the exception of some holidays we're short <laughs> on. But um, yeah, it's uh, every day we're open here. So Great, yeah, and for everyone watching out there, we'll make sure to put links to uh, those different social media sites yeah. in the description so you can check that out, follow them, and if you are uh, live in the area or ever happen to be passing through this area in Arizona, definitely come through, check out the store. Uh, you can't be, you know, running your hands through the, the bulk mm -hmm. brick or checking out these sets, you know, in person. Uh, I think it, it's so cool every time we get to come in and just check out uh, the store here. So thanks for showing us around today. Yeah, of course. And, you know, you definitely can uh, catch our puffy minifig out there. So that's right up there every now and again. We try to get him up as often as we can. So uh, he's definitely an eye catcher. He brought some people in this morning that didn't know we were here. So um, they're like, I couldn't miss that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep an eye out for the, yeah. the giant minifig out by the yeah. road and hopefully you can stop in soon yourself. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you.